Hi, I'm Amy. This is House of Nash Eats, and today we are making scotcheroos. Okay, so we're gonna start making our scotcheroos. Now, we're gonna use a large pot, make sure it's big enough because we're going to make like the, the sauce part of it and then we'll add six cups of Rice Krispie Treats. So it needs to be like a large size pot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add one cup of granulated sugar and then we're going to add a cup of light corn syrup. And a trick if you're using corn syrup is to spray your measuring cup with a little bit of cooking spray first, and it will help it just come out a little bit easier in your pan. So I'm gonna spray that, pour this. And then it just kind of slides right out of the measuring cup. And that works, it works really great with like honey or molasses or other like sticky things, just so you don't get like a lot of it stuck in your cup and mismeasure. So now we're going to add one and a half cups of creamy peanut butter. I have not made this with natural peanut butter, but usually things don't turn out as well with me for me when I use natural peanut butter, so I just like using regular creamy peanut butter. And there's nothing more satisfying than like a brand new jar of peanut butter when you like scoop into the top of it. I love that feeling. I'm not the only one, right? Tell me in the comments below if you like get joy from a brand new jar of peanut butter. Okay, and then we're just going to add our peanut butter to the large pot. And these three ingredients are all you really need to make the sauce. We're going to add a little vanilla right at the end. But once we get our peanut butter and corn syrup and sugar into the pot, then we're going to stir them to combine. And we're going to heat this over medium low heat just until the sugar dissolves and the peanut butter is melted. You don't want this to come to a boil because if it starts to boil, your scotcheroos will turn out like harder um, and you don't want like rock hard scotcheroos. You want them to be like soft and chewy. Okay, so I've just got a wooden spoon and I'm going to stir all of this to combine. And then once everything is all melted, and it's only going to take about like five minutes or so, you don't wanna rush it um, because if you turn the heat up, that's when you run the risk of boiling your mixture and like cooking it too far, and we don't want that. So take your time. It's a no-bake recipe, pretty easy. It doesn't take very long, but to have really good scotcheroos, you just don't wanna rush it. So scotcheroos are a Midwest favorite. I did them to include in my collection of Iowa recipes. I have a series on my site where I do recipes that I call America Eats, and it's recipes representing every state. And so these are super popular in Iowa. I have a couple of Iowa friends out there who were like, you have to make scotcheroos. But I was born in Nebraska, and we have these in Nebraska too, so I was already really familiar with scotcheroos. They're a childhood favorite. They've got this chewy peanut butter, like kind of Rice Krispie treat base with a butterscotch chocolate topping and it is to die for. Like these are so, so good and like the flavor of my childhood. Okay, so once this is pretty much smooth, it's okay if it's still a little bit grainy, but it, once it's all melted together and smooth, don't let it come to a boil. We're gonna take it off of the pan or off of the stove top, sorry. And then we're going to stir in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And once that has been added, then you're going to want to add six cups of Rice Krispies cereal. So I've got that all measured out. These are a great treat if you have like a gluten-free friend that you want to take something to because Rice Krispies are naturally gluten-free, although be sure to check your labels, but it's great because then they can enjoy it and it's like got the same like chewiness of like a bar um, without any gluten. You could also make these if you have like a peanut allergy by substituting with like some other type of butter. You could use cookie butter or you could use like um, a sunflower butter I think is a good substitute. Okay, and once everything is evenly coated in that 
mixture, we're going to transfer it to a nine by 13 inch pan. Okay, so I've got my nine by 13 inch pan and I just lined it with a parchment paper sling and I secured it with a couple of little like paper clip, clippy things. And I'm just going to transfer all of this peanut butter mixture and it's like super gooey and warm and it smells so, so amazing. I'm gonna put that right in the pan. And if you don't wanna do the parchment paper sling, you could just butter the pan to keep it from sticking. I like to do the parchment paper sling because I am the worst person in the world at cutting straight lines. So it's a lot easier for me if I have them out of the pan, I can lift them all out once they're set. And that's a lot easier for me to cut straight lines. And then I'm just gonna use a spatula and spray it with a little cooking spray so it doesn't stick. And I'm gonna use that to kind of pat these down gently. You don't wanna really compress it hard, but you just wanna spread it out into the pan in an even layer. Now we're gonna set this aside and we're going to make our chocolate butterscotch topping. All right, so to make our topping, all we're going to do is combine one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. You could use milk chocolate or dark chocolate or whatever you want with one cup of butterscotch chips. And then we're going to pop these in the microwave and heat them in 20 second increments, stirring between each burst of heat just until everything is melted. You could also do this on the stove in a double, like a double boiler by just setting a bowl, a glass bowl over some simmering water until everything is melted and smooth. Okay, so these have been in the microwave for like 60 seconds and I've stopped between every 20 seconds to stir them and they're just now starting to melt, um, but they're still holding their shape. So we're gonna keep going for probably another minute. So once the chips start to melt all the way together, it's okay to stop before they're fully melted. The residual heat is going to finish melting the rest of the chips for the most part. So if you need to pop them back in for a few more seconds, that's totally fine. But it's better to stop early than to cook them too long and burn the chocolate. Okay, so that's nice and smooth and it's pretty thick. So we're gonna now bring our bars, our scotcheroos, and we're going to just pour this chocolate butterscotch mixture on top and we're gonna get every last bit of it. These are like a bake sale favorite that you'll see like on a dessert table. And they're just so, it's such like an iconic flavor, the butterscotch and chocolate and peanut butter together. So once you pour it on, we're just gonna use a spatula to spread it into a thin layer on top of your bars. And it's just barely enough, just the right amount. Okay. And once you've got that done, then all you have to do is wait for the bars to cool and the chocolate is going to set up again so it's nice and firm and then you can slice the bars into squares. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours and my bars have just firmed up at room temperature and you can speed up the process a little bit by sticking them in the fridge. But the reason why I did the sling earlier, the parchment paper sling, is so I can pull them right out of my pan. And I like transferring them to a cutting board because it's so much easier for me to slice them into straight lines, which I'm terrible at if they're in the pan. Okay, so now this is the moment of truth. This is when I actually have to cut lines. This is really hard for me. Use a really sharp knife and I'll just cut right down the middle and hope for the best. Scotcheroos are a lot like Rice Krispie treats in that they're chewy and they're made with Rice Krispies, but they have a little bit of a different texture. It's chewier and more firm, and the flavor is all its own. They're really a unique treat. And that's all there is to it. That's how you make scotcheroos. I'm going to transfer them to a plate and stack them up. If you stack them high and you're transporting them somewhere, you might wanna put some wax paper or parchment paper between the layers so they don't stick. But otherwise, you can just make a little pile of them and they are so, so good. Can't wait to try these. Okay, so now I get to have a taste of these scotcheroos and they smell so good. So I'm gonna grab this one and go for it. Okay, these taste so, so good. They are 
chewy and like caramelly buttery with the butterscotch and chocolate and peanut butter and like the texture is just amazing. These are so, so good. It's no wonder they're a Midwest favorite. For all my Nebraska and Iowa friends, you know what I'm talking about. I hope you guys love these Scotcheroos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys love these Scotcheroos as much as my family does. If you do, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more great recipes just like this.